Hi, everyone. It's wonderful to be here amongst people who are believing in shifts. And it is truly wonderful to see such a young crowd and a mixture of parents and um, slightly more grown-ups. And all of us believe in the same thing, shifts. So that's why I am here as well. So to start with, I have to tell you my story. And yes, it's a mother's story, a very simple story. And this story has actually evolved and born out of passion. And this passion was in turn born out of necessity. So once again, just a simple story, a mother's story. I truly believe that only if we dream will our dreams come true. We have to believe in possibilities. We have to believe in transcending boundaries. We have to believe in many things that we have never envisaged. So only if you dream will dreams come true. That has been a solid belief right through life for me up till now and for the future. Let's talk about necessity because I said that my passion of what I created, and I will tell you what I created, but my passion was born out of necessity. Now, we all say necessity is uh, necessity triggers creativity, but I will disagree in one way. I would say necessity does trigger creativity, but not sitting on its own. There has to be a mind shift. So that is what I'm going to talk about a little bit. And I'm going to take you through my personal story as I show you how I shifted my mindset. So let's talk about necessity. Just over 15 years ago, my family moved, relocated from New Delhi overseas. I have two daughters. We have two daughters. My older daughter, Sonali, had just completed her 10th board in India. And then she was thrown into the American school right into grade 11. And all students studying here will understand what a different atmosphere that is. The IB system, and you have it here now, but at that point, it wasn't in India. So for my daughter, it was like a completely different world, a huge challenge. Plus, you will identify with her situation. She had lost all her friends. She had left all of them behind in Delhi. She had left everything she loved and was thrown into a different situation. And grade 11, that age group, is very difficult. It's very difficult to adjust into a new situation. On top of that, what happened? The school said, oh, within two months, Sonali needs to take the SAT. And I said, really, what is SAT? I had no idea. So a scholastic aptitude test, right? I get that. What is this going to do? Ooh, apparently, it's going to change my, my daughter's test. life. Apparently, it'll have so much impact, it will actually impact where she studies for the next four years of her life. Now, starting from the spelling of SAT, I said, wow, this is tremendously stressful for this child. So the first thing is, as a mother, I recognized that there is a problem and there is a need. So first of all, I had to recognize that. That itself, for me, was a shift. Then, more importantly, I set about thinking, how can I help my child? What is there that I can do to help her? After all, I'm educated. I have an advantage of having studied advanced math, economics, and English. What is it that I can do to help her? She's already struggling with all these MUNs and extracurriculars, and I want to do list leadership, and I want to do that. She's a bright child. So I had to have a can-do attitude, of course. Be optimistic and positive. That is another attitude I had to, I had it in me, but it, I had never been tested, to be honest. And this was something that was testing me. Keep an open mind. Ask. Collaborate. That is exactly what I did. I was in a foreign country. I really knew no one. And my husband was busy with his work. He went straight into work. So I started asking around, exploring solutions. What is it that I can do? Finally, I went into the American library, locked myself up there for eight hours a day. I taught myself 
to study for the SAT. I taught myself, more importantly, why is Sonali struggling? Where is the problem? Why is she making these mistakes in mathematics? Why is she making these mistakes in English reading and writing and grammar? So I taught myself all that. And then I came back home. And everything that I learned during the day, I would teach to Sonali. Within a month, she had to take the SAT, and she succeeded. She almost maxed her score. So this is just the beginning. And then what started happening, students started approaching me. Parents started approaching me. My students became, the class became bigger and bigger and bigger. And in fact, it became a passion for me to see my students succeed. When students got into a university, I would get the first phone call, Suniti. I've got into Princeton, Suniti, I've got Harvard, Suniti, I've got NYU, I've got Boston University, and that started pumping me ever so much. It was such a passion, it became a passion with me. So, after 15 years and 1,500 students, most of them one-on-one -on -one and some in large groups, I said, what am I doing with this passion? How can I reach more and more students? At that point, I was teaching 18 hours a day. I moved through six countries, but I taught 18 hours a day. Students in Singapore, students in US, students in Australia, students in UK, everywhere. I was teaching on Skype, live, all kinds of possibilities. How could I bring this knowledge that I had garnered? I would say wealth, not so much knowledge, I would say wealth. I had garnered this from my students. I had learned from each and every student why the student is making this mistake, where the student is struggling. How is he thinking? How is she thinking? My professor at Murray Britt at uh, Auckland College of Education said to me, Suniti, don't force students to accept your way. Listen to them. Understand why they are making this mistake. Listen to what is the possible solution that they have in mind. And then you can correct. Sometimes you will learn a lot from them because they have a different way of thinking and you should be open-minded. So another mind shift for me. Because in India, when I was growing up, you said, okay, do this, do this, do this, do this. And we're going to give you 0.5 for this, 0.5 for this, 0.5 for this. But I learned how to move out of that. What is it that the child is thinking? Is that correct? If his way is correct, I should accept it. Right? So that was a mindset. So the problem was, I wanted to bring this knowledge, this wealth, to more and more students. I wanted to bring it to as many students as possible. I was inspired at that moment by Dr. Clayton Christensen, who, of course, is a proponent of the disruptive theory of innovation, and especially in education. So Dr. Christensen says that it is imperative for us to bring online education to students so that they can study wherever whenever they want. They can study at their own pace and path. And also a kind of education online that will satisfy a particular student's need, because not every student is alike. So it was a great inspiration for me. But there are skeptics, critics. We have to listen carefully to our critics, because that is where you learn what is it that you should not be doing? And what is the solution that you really need to find? So I kept an open mind. Private tutor online? Are you going to be there on Skype? I said, no. That is something I do already. And that is not any different from a one-on-one -on -one tutor. So I'm going to be on every child's desktop whenever the child wants to study with me. 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock, whatever, on a beach at Bali, Kovalam Beach, Bombay, Goa, wherever, on vacation, in an auditorium, on a bus. Really, how is that even possible? So skeptics, how is that possible was the key question, and that is what I wanted to answer. Now, here's a funny story. My husband always says, you talk so much. I say, yeah, I do. but." Teaching students, that is where this talking, talking, talking really came in handy. I talk too much, but I try to listen as well. That is something he doesn't say to me. He said, listen, you talk so much. 
I said, no, I listen as well. That is how I'm learning from my students. So then, my daughters. The one in the blue-green is Sonali. At that point, she was studying at Harvard Business School. And the one in the red is Urvashi, my younger daughter, who was working as a digital marketing person, executive, with Ogilvy and Metha. They believe in me because they succeeded. I taught them they succeeded. So they believe in me. So I started talking to these girls. And I said, we've got to do something. And so we walked the talk and we talked the walk. There was a lot of walking. There was a lot of talking. But we came to a solution. I built a model. And these girls brought it online in a very limited way. We tested this model with, with over 600 students. Ooh. Timer is showing me zero, so I need to rush. Like most kids in high school, Sonali felt a lot of pressure from her parents, so teachers, and peers to do well at school while maintaining her extracurricular interests. She constantly felt like there just weren't enough hours in the day and was overwhelmed about her upcoming SAT test date. Her sister, Urvashi, had the same stresses as well. How much did she need to study for the SAT? Where would she start? Their mom, Suniti, was a high school teacher. She decided to help her daughters by tutoring them for the SAT. And sure enough, the sisters got into their dream school, the University of Notre Dame, and went on to start their careers in New York City. Meanwhile, Suniti continued to tutor students one-on-one, -on -one, in groups, and even over video chat. Her record of success led to more requests for tutoring than she could accommodate, and eventually, she had to turn students away. Suniti wanted to find a way to help more students, so she called her daughters. At the time, Urvashi was an advertising executive in New York, and Sonali was an MBA candidate at Harvard Business School. The trio realized that they could combine their skills and bring Suniti's teaching to the world. And after tremendous hard work, the mother-daughter team launched Test Rocker, a unique and personalized online education platform for standardized test preparation so that Suniti never has to turn another student away and so that students across the world can now access the ultimate private tutor at their fingertips. Now let's talk about a dream come true. So I proved all those skeptics wrong. I'm happy to say that. In fact, most of them are converted into believers. So now today we have created Test Rocker Test Rocker was born on 12-12-12, just over a year now, and we are in 18 countries. Students in 18 countries are studying with me. I am on their desktop with them, studying with them for the SAT and also the ACT. And that I had thought was never possible. But it is. It is a dream come true. And of course, with the evolution in technology, from when we started, technology is continuing to grow. So there are so many, it's, I'm just mind boggled at the amount of technology that is supporting our program. So we have intercom. So when a student is studying, I can actually land up on the desk and make a comment. Hey, James. Hey, Jerry. Hey, Mark. You haven't logged in for a while. Is there any problem? Write to us. We might help you. There are 10 days for your SAT. You haven't progressed enough. Can I send you a calendar, which if you follow, will help you? So we are totally connected to the students. Although everything is online, we are right behind the students. So it is truly a dream come true, made possible by innovation, made possible by technology. So now a student can access studying with me for the SAT, ACT, whether you have an iPad or a desktop or an Android or any handheld device that has internet, which is so amazing. I had never thought that to be possible. And as you can see in this picture, another mind shift that I had to adjust to was working with my daughters. So we work together. We have a dynamic team in New York, not just my daughters. We have a huge team in New York. And we have a great team in Asia. And in the office, everybody calls me Suniti. And as Indian parents can say, you. Your children never call you by, their, your, by your name. But everyone calls me Suniti. Oh, I'm studying with Suniti. Suniti, can you do this? Suniti, can you do that? But here is one interesting thing. 
as soon as we step out of the office, as you can see, I say, mama knows the best. So, <laughs> so that is a mother coming back to her mother's role. Only in the office, I'm Suniti. And on everybody's desktop, I'm uh, top, I'm Suniti. But outside the office, I'm a mom. And that is a simple story. So a truly a dream come true, a passion born out of necessity and creativity and a total um, evolution in my mindset. So a complete shift. So that is what I wanted to tell you about. Thank you so much.